meant that I could be here today. Uh, a wonderful luncheon on Wednesday, and then uh, an important event tomorrow. So uh, my wife and I decided to delay our, we're on our way from Santa Barbara to Qatar, and this is just a five night Please stop. Go. Natural stop. <laughs> Natural stop, exactly. Um, for uh, when, the f when, the, when my phone rang uh, at the end of the first session, I thought I would have to leave quickly because uh, uh, I, we were worried that it wouldn't be sufficient to the Cuban embassy that my wife went to the embassy to get our visas. Well, she called to tell me that she was successful. We have both have visas to Cuba. So we'll be in Cuba 5th of May. Um, um, so so this, um, uh, this is a joint paper with uh, Carlos Garriga, who's at the St. Louis Fed, and Roman Sustek, who's at uh, Queen, uh, Queen Mary. He used to be at uh, Southampton, but he uh, got tired of, uh, of commuting, so he, he is now in London. Um, I, I, I don't know how to make uh, slides like this. Um, all I know how to make is uh, our um, handwritten transparencies. Uh, and I was told that uh, Spain isn't advanced enough to have machinery that I, on which I can put uh, handwritten transparencies. So, so these are slides made by Roman, and they're, they're made for, uh, for a talk uh, of 75 minutes, so I'll have to uh, skip some of this stuff. Uh, the general area of uh, residential construction has interested us for a while. Um, it sort of started by observing that uh, different countries, uh, uh, the, the extent to which either uh, residential construction leads the cycle. Uh, it, it, the United States is a key example of residential construction leading the cycle by two or three quarters. Uh, as opposed to other countries where it's more or less uh, coincident. And then there's the interesting observation that, um, that uh, in some countries, for various reasons, uh, mortgages are uh, mostly fixed rate. Other, other countries, they're most, uh, mostly adjustable rate. Uh, and there are also I interesting features about how interest rates move uh, over the business cycle. Uh, so, so uh, and uh, this is an area where uh, what happens is not small. Um, Um, if you look at the size of the mortgage debt as a percent of annual GDP, it, in some countries it's getting up around 100%, as large as, uh, as uh, annual GDP. And the mortgage payments as, as, uh, as a fraction of net income, uh, as you see, uh, around 20% in the United States, even more in uh, and the uh, UK even more in uh, Germany and France. Um, so so our idea is that uh, these days l lots of people try various sorts of rigidities, either in uh, prices or wages. Uh, we're a little, uh, you know, we're not so excited about those rigidities, but this is a natural rigidity to, for us to study, uh, the fact that uh, you, you commit to uh, a loan for 30 years, uh, and, uh, and then the, the question is, is there potential for monetary policy to play a role in, uh, in, in that context? So, so that's, that's what we'll, uh, we'll study. Um, so so we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a model of, uh, th that we calibrate to uh, uh, quintiles of the income dis distribution. So uh, people in the uh, low, lowest two quintiles, they, uh, they hardly any own any houses. Most houses are owned by people in the third and fourth quintile, 
um, and uh, and they will uh, er, they will they work so they will ha earn labor income. Um, the fifth quintile, we will uh, we will have capital owners, and they will be calibrated to the fifth quintile of the U.S. wealth distribution. Um, we have versions of the model where people do have access to the bond market or not, and so so I'll have uh, I'll have uh, alternative uh, experiments for for those for those uh, two situations. Uh, and we'll have a Taylor type um, monetary, uh, monetary, uh, um, monetary policy rule. S so it turns out there are basically what we could call a price channel, price effect, and there's a, um, there's a wealth effect. The price effect affects new uh, residential construction. The wealth effect hits uh, existing loans. Um, and, and so these wealth effects, there are both present and future wealth effects. Uh, so, so we'll ab abstract from all other rigidities. No, uh, I mean, you could put in other, other stuff if you want to, but we'll to try to focus on, on the role uh, of these uh, mortga different mortgages, adjustable rate mortgages versus fixed rate mortgages, no other rigidities. Uh, the only effect is going to be just that there's going to be capital loss or a capital gain. So what is this new bet? What, why is there any effect on the new bet? Well, uh, let, me, let me get to that. So, so the way uh, Roman slides uh, <laughs> progress, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, the, there's going to be a three-period example, just, just to uh, get you familiar with some of the notation and where these effects are coming from. Uh, I'll have, uh, then, then I'll give some, um, some uh, pictures done uh, from, a from a standard mortgage calculator of uh, what happens w if there's a change in the interest rate. A and it's important that it's not just the f uh, current change, but the, the, the whole path of the interest rate is going to be important. Um, so, so let me get to that. Well, the, uh, one of the things I, li I love about, uh, and all my life, academic life, I've uh, loved doing uh, dynamic macro because I have, maybe it's because I'm stupid, but, I, but I, there's always something that surprises the hell out of me. I mean, uh, I, I hardly ever get exactly what, what I expected when I started. And uh, uh, if, if one thinks about this naively, one might think that, well, the, the, uh, the uh, strictest rigidity has to be when you have fixed rate mortgages. Uh, and so uh, maybe that's where you would get the largest effect. But it turns out the, uh, it's, the, it's the opposite. The, uh, the uh, adjustable rate mortgages are where monetary policy has, can have the biggest effect. And, and, and that turns out to be because these, um, in, uh, these two effects, price effect and the wealth effect, in the case of fixed rate mortgages, they go in opposite, direct, opposite directions while under adjustable rate mortgages, they go in the same direction. Um, now, we'll have uh, two types of shocks. We'll have an uh, a, uh, inflation target shock and, uh, and a T TFP shock. A and these, um, these effects are, are uh, 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 the biggest effects are under uh, the inflation uh, target shock. The, the, uh, under TFP shock, it's true that they will affect the, the movement of the uh, inflation rate over the cycle, but, but they tend to be relatively minor. Uh, now, we are going to abstract from refinancing, so, so you should think of these, uh, our findings as upper bounds on what you're likely to find. 
the, the, the case of refinancing, that's something we, there are many things we have saved for future, future research, and, uh, and I'll list some, some more at the very end. Early repayments or something? Yeah, okay. st stuff like that. Before the early uh, yes. Um, <coughs> So basically, past literature has been, uh, uh, even though we know that mortgages are like typically 30-year mortgages, the literature has, uh, ha hasn't gotten much beyond uh, financing housing using a one-period loan. Uh, there are some examples of two-period two loans, but, but, but uh, we, we were more ambitious. Uh, in fact, that was something that held us back for a while. We had thought about this for a number of years, but how do you deal with, uh, with the idea that uh, you have 120 quarters and you have, uh, at any point in time, you have mortgages with uh, <laughs> any, any combination of, uh, of uh, remaining duration. So, 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 so that was something, coming up with a way to do that was, was one of the uh, big advantages, and I'll emphasize that. Um, so, yes, so uh, the two channels of transmission. Um, okay, so, so in the interest of time, I, 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 won't, I won't really, uh, I'm happy to answer questions about the, these, uh, I mean, calibration and so on, but, uh, but uh, uh, my goal is primarily to, if, you're, if I can interest you uh, sufficiently to read the paper, that. That would be a success. And by the way, finally, I'm talking about technological advance. I, I've heard it's possible to have a home page. So finally, I have a home page. You can find this paper on my home page. It's www. Dot, and then it's my first and last name uh, with nothing in between. Dot com. <laughs> My, my daughter made it. <laughs> She's an expert in that kind of thing. Um, so, um, so, so that's an example of a, a case where the apple fell very far from the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So, so let's, let's just do a very simple e example, and, and I won't have time to go through all of the aspects of it, but just to g get you started uh, in thinking about how, th how this works. So, so let's have a home homeowners used for, uh, live for three periods. Um, for now, holding uh, uh, WNR, the wage rate and, and interest rate constants, and, and also to, to take... Uh, interest rates, normal interest rates as exogenous. This, this, all of this will be relaxed because it, there will be a full general equilibrium model where all of this uh, uh, moves in, in, in equilibrium. But, uh, but this is just to illustrate what's going on. So let's, let, let's say the homeowner has a utility function over consumption in three periods uh, plus uh, he values housing. Um, so the uh, three uh, period budget constraints, you have, you buy the housing and consumption first period using your income and you, you borrow. Uh, L is the nominal loan, so this is in real terms. And that's going to be, um, we'll take that as a, as a fraction of, of, the, uh, of the house. Uh, in, in the United States, that theta on the average has uh, hovered around 0.76, so that uh, gives you an idea of the order of magnitude. Um, then uh, in the uh, second and third periods, the loan will be paid back. So the so M2 and M3 are the <coughs> loan payments, and uh, in the case of mortgages, uh, a payment consists of interest on a loan plus, plus uh, the fraction of the loan you pay back in, in this case in, in the uh, second period. 
and then similarly in the third period, the remaining fraction you pay back. A and uh, it's not very touching real. Pardon? It's not touching real though. No, those are nominal. The I2 and I3? Yeah, yeah, the C2 equation is really cost constant. It's divided by M. But yeah, M is divided by. Yeah. Um, and and um, the standard mortgage says that payment in every period is equal. So that means that uh, this amount is equal to to that amount. Uh, but of course, uh, so that means that uh, in, in, uh, in practice, uh, in the beginning, most of the payments are in the form of interest, and then uh, uh, it goes the other way. Um, so adjustable rate mortgage means you in every period, you set the interest rate to, uh, to what the interest rate was last period. Well, in the fixed rate mortgage, the interest rate in both periods will be equal. But of course, uh, in, in the fixed rate case, they will be set so that the present value of uh, your payments uh, of one dollar of a mortgage uh, is one dollar. So, uh, so, so, uh, so that, that's what would, de would determine what, how large this, uh, this uh, fixed rate uh, will turn out to be. Uh, I mean, but in practice, right, they either have to, well, they, I guess they have a fixed cost, but they set the interest rate maybe a bit higher to ensure the bank gets prepayment. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in practice, the fixed rate mortgages are really adjustable rates for if you go down, and that screws the bank, right? Something like that. I mean, uh, yes. Something like that. Okay. Uh, that will not be the, my first project to work on, but but I agree. There, there are all kinds of interesting aspects uh, in this sec in this area. We're, we're uh, all, all kinds of things I can I can see PhD students one, wanting to work on. So. Um, okay, so. So there, there's one uh, important first order condition, uh, uh, and, uh, and and this is uh, it involves kind of a wedge um, um, that affects investment in housing, and this this wedge, it, you know, it it. Um, it, it works uh, like uh, an ad valorem, uh, either a tax or a subsidy on on uh, investing in, in housing. Um, I think there's a typo in. I'm joking. It's Roman fault. I'd be surprised as hell. Roman is. <laughs> yeah. but, but so. so, so yeah. Fixed rate mortgage and, and adjustable rate. Yeah. Here's a multiplier, right? So, 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 um, in this case, in this example, we're not going to let the uh, uh, homeowner have access to uh, financial markets, which means that th uh, they. Um, their stochastic, dif uh, stochastic uh, discount rates are different from, let's say, the, the discount uh, rate uh, in, in, the, uh, you know, in the capital market. Uh, um, and that's what these, these are. This, this is mu 1, 2, for example. That's beta times u prime of c2 divided by u prime of c1. Uh, so that will be different, f different from uh, the usual uh, pricing kernel. Um, and so these are really the present values of the payments of a $1 lo loan. Um, 
evaluated at, at those sto stochastic discount rates. Now, what's, the only thing I want to point out here is that uh, these terms all depend, they depend on nominal variables, uh, the, the fixed rate interest rate, the uh, inflation rate in both periods, so that w if, uh, if the monetary policymaker sets I1 and I2, uh, by usual arbitrage uh, relations, immediately that uh, affects the pi two, the pi three, and the IF, and so so it's clear that monetary policy can can have an effect. Now the The, oh, no, no, there are some special cases where uh, so gamma, ga gamma, so, so, uh, so a, a typical gamma could, could be, uh, let's say, uh, for example, in the beginning, the, uh, the interest payments tend to be greater than, uh, than uh, amortization. So gamma could be 0.2 or 0.3 or something. Real number, right? so why is it it's just a fraction. Yeah, but it's a fraction of a loan that to me that's real. The nominal interest rate is nominal and then adding up the two. That's what's giving you the nominal strategy. And I don't understand why it happens. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think this is correct. I know, but the gamma is the portion of the nominal portion, loan, yes. Of nominal loan that you pay. Yeah, in the first period. Now, now here, here we can already see uh, how the price effect so might might work. Okay, that means that if you, you, if you double inflation rate, you're going to be reducing the fraction of the loan you pay in each period. That's an only strategy. Okay. So, so if the if the policymaker raises I one, uh, that means that uh, pi two will uh, go up by the same portion. This will go up by the same portion, but. Because of, uh, of the gamma being uh, smaller than one, it will have a bigger effect on the uh, numerator than the denominator. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so we have some. I, I'm going to skip the wealth effect and just talk about it briefly when I show s some pictures of, uh, of how this would work for, for a 30 year mortgage. So, so suppose. Suppose we think of a 30-year mortgage. Uh, the interest rate is 4%. This is a numerical example. Uh, the mortgage is four times annual income. The debt servicing cost, that's the, uh, the real amount you pay divided by your income. Um, so under a constant short-term interest rate, if we think of that as steady state, the debt servicing cost Goes goes like this. Now suppose suppose the uh, the Fed eases, as they call it, uh, they reduce the interest rate um, by by uh, by three percentage points, and then it moves slowly back according to some uh, fairly realistic uh, autoregressive process, <coughs> such as this. In that case, easing under the fixed rate mortgage would mean that initially uh, the debt servicing cost is lower, but then eventually it will, uh, it will uh, move ab above the, the steady state uh, uh, line. Under adjustable rate mortgage, the same kind of easing uh, would have this effect on, um, on the debt servicing cost. Now, it doesn't have to move further. It all depends on the total path uh, of, uh, of, this, uh, of this curve. Here, here's one where it uh, drops more slowly to a, to a bottom and then uh, starts recovering. In this case, I mean, th this, this drop would be uh, built into the, uh, the fixed rate mortgage already I'm assuming a certainty about, uh, about it, 
already back here. And, and so in this case, it turns out that the easing under the fixed rate mortgage would be greater. But this is not a particularly re realistic example. This, uh, this is what we regard as uh, closer to what's described by the, uh, or what the data would tell us. Here, here's one where with more persistence. And, and here, here they both uh, debt servicing costs dropped by a lot. And, and so here on the very persistent uh, interest rate cuts, the, these two types of loans have uh, uh, they have very very similar um, similar price effects. Now, in the paper, we also have similar charts. I, 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 I did. I don't have. Uh, I don't have uh, them on the slides, illustrating the uh, wealth effect, namely by doing this for for. Uh, so, so so this this is at the beginning. You can think of this as a new loan, a uh, new 120 quarter loan. Suppose you did this for an already existing loan uh, with 119 periods left to go. Uh, that, that would be an example. I mean, you, you could have all kinds of illustrations of the wealth effect depending on how many periods are left to go. But you would see that the, uh, if you were to increase the interest rate, for example, under a fixed rate mortgage, uh, for an existing loan, clearly, then you get the usual effect uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the payments becoming lower, same as if it had been a one-period loan. Uh, under the um, adjustable rate mortgage, it, it's a little more complicated because then it's a question, does the effect of the interest rate going up, that was something that appeared in the numerator, does it which one is bigger, the, that effect or the fact that the pi in the deno denominator uh, goes up? Well, it turns out in the beginning of an adjustable rate, an existing uh, adjustable rate mortgages, mor mortgage after an interest rate rise, uh, the interest rate effect dominates. Uh, and, and so that means it goes in the opposite direction of the fixed rate mortgage. But after a number of periods, then it starts reversing so that the, uh, it, uh, the, uh, the inflation effect takes over. Anyway, so, th so the, these, are, these are just some, uh, these, uh, you know, now I've introduced some notation, and, uh, but we're ready to extend the, the uh, model to a three, p uh, to an infinite horizon. Uh, two types of shocks, multi-period mortgages, and full uh, general equilibrium. Uh, so, so we'll have competitive producers. Uh, One more yes. So what I was wondering about possible mortgage default, it doesn't exist. Doesn't exist, no. Um, I mean, the, these, so given what kind of uh, person you are here, everyone is alike. And so uh, I, I suppose, I, I don't think this is a mo uh, the type of mo model I would use for, uh, for yeah, no, but yeah. Uh, nope, we haven't, we haven't. Um, so. Um, because it's a very important issue in monetary policy. Uh, what you just low inflation meant much more likely just because of what you I see. That's interesting. Yes. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so consumption and the two types, uh, 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 productive capital and, and then uh, structures are produced. And I wrote it this way because we have a, uh, we have a, um, kind of a tr transformation cost kind of between the sum of C and, and uh, XK on the one hand and the excess on the other. In other words, there's a cost to transfer resources from, uh, say, from the combination of those two to this or the other way around. And uh, that's something, it's like what Huffman and Wynn did. Um, 
and it's something, if we didn't do it, a residential construction would just fluctuate way too much. Um, there are competitive home builders. Um, I already mentioned the two agent types, and because these are calibrated to percentiles, it's natural uh, to quartiles. Two quartiles for the homeowners, so two thirds of the population, uh, uh, them and uh, capital owners. Um, the uh, Taylor rule. Um, originally, we we had uh, an output effect, uh, output uh, term also in it, but it turns out that had very little effect, and so uh, so we just took it out. Uh, at least uh, I'll uh, I'll omit it in this presentation. But uh, but this is a standard effect uh, standard term where this uh, is typically somewhere between one and one point five, uh, and and this is a a um, target level uh, shock with a high. Um, with uh, high persistence, uh, estimated from the data. Um, some people argue, that there's a paper, for example, by PSSC, uh, that um, that kind of uh, level shock accounts for about 90% of uh, movements of, uh, of, uh, inter of uh, bond rates at all uh, maturities. A and. Uh, so this idea of uh, this formulation has been used by, for example, Atkinson and Patrick Kehoe uh, as a, uh, admittedly not a structural uh, way of doing it, but, but something that has, has the same, uh, same flavor. Um, so homeowner's problem is, uh, well, you uh, uh, you can consume, you can uh, buy uh, a home at the price pH, yeah. or uh, you can accumulate bonds. You have labor income, you, you have uh, interest income. The, the homeowner gets no capital income. I mean, that's a ballpark of, uh, of uh, what we see from looking at these uh, quintiles. A and this is, this is a... Um, participation cost for uh, being part of the uh, uh, bond market, uh, something we calibrate to, to work by. Others have, have uh, looked at that, for example, looking at unsecured consumer debt, and they have come, come up with uh, ways of, of, uh, of parameterizing this kind of thing. Uh, I'm referring to, there's a paper by Chataye, Kobe, the Nakayama, and uh, Rios Rule. Um, and then there's uh, new loans and then uh, paying back uh, existing uh, mortgages. Uh, this you saw, uh, and the standard law motion for, for the housing with a depreciation rate delta, delta H. Uh, the capital owner's problem. Uh, same kind of thing, by the way, we, we use log, uh, uh, log utility functions. Consumption, he, he uh, purchases productive capital. Uh, whenever a notation is uh, similar for the two, two the, uh, with putting a star on it refers to, uh, to a capital owner. Uh, he gets um, uh, rental income, uh, interest income, uh, and there we have the, oh, and this, this just means that, uh, this means that in, we assume that in every period, the capital owner gets an endowment uh, of uh, additional land. A and this is just a trick we use to be, a to be able to uh, say something cyclically about uh, the price of housing. Uh, standard law motion here. Equilibrium, of course, uh, these must be equal. Similarly, for the L's and B's, uh, M, the, the M, for example, is uh, uh, received from, uh, from the uh, homeowners, and so, uh, so in equilibrium, they, uh, 
that must be equal to the homeowner's M. Okay. Um, so, so as I said, a, at first we were stumped by, uh, you know, if you have uh, 120 quarter mortgages, uh, you might think, okay, now you're stuck with 119 state variables. Uh, mortgages of all uh, remaining durations. Uh, so we, so we, we found a way around that to cut down 100, the 119 state variables to three. I'm not taking credit. This, uh, this was a Roman. Roman is a very smart guy. And uh, so, uh, so here's what he came up with. Uh, so these these are the um, mortgage payment, a and they're uh, um, at time t. This is the outstanding amount of uh, of uh, mortgages. Uh, the payment is a combination of nominal interest rate payment and amortization. Uh, these three. Um, Variables are, are all take, uh, treated as state variables. So um, the, the outstanding mortgage debt, uh, standard law motion, new, new mortgages, L. The amortization next period is a combination of a term f coming from the past plus the term coming from uh, the fraction of uh, total uh, loans uh, being new mortgages. And there's a parameter alpha and a parameter kappa. The, um, this alpha is going to be a number less than one, but very close to one. And the kappa is going to be a small number, uh, one that's not far from zero. I'll show you, uh, this, is, a, this is, an, is an approximation, and I'll show you how good it is. Uh, now, the interest rate depends on, with fixed rate mortgages, it's a combination of whatever the existing uh, outstanding uh, uh, loan we're taking out at, plus, uh, plus, uh, plus new loans, or the current interest rate. Um, No, no, but you remember, you, the, the, this, this is the fixed, the, the interest payments on a whole portfolio of uh, mortgages at, at all uh, uh, maturities. So, so, so this, this is uh, gamma t to the alpha. Um, the, the fully drawn lines, represent the approximation. So this is uh, the approximation of the uh, steady mortgage payment in, in normal terms. This is, uh, this is the remaining mortgage, uh, depending on uh, how far into it we are. This, here you see the uh, portions of interest rate payments and uh, amortization payments, and, and this is uh, uh, this is the approximation error for, for this curve, uh, which uh, up until the uh, 80 quarter uh, duration, this is an amazing, uh, uh, amazingly good approximation. In fact, one can, one can go a step further a and uh, have a high order uh, 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 polynomial uh, in the approximation, and then it becomes even more amazing. Now, um, so, so this is for, for a steady state. You may wonder how well does that deal with uh, things moving uh, subject to shocks, blah, blah, blah. Um, Roman gave the paper with the discussant. The discussant took it upon himself to program up the exact uh, solution. Um, it took uh, three hours to solve on, the compu on a workstation. Uh, the approximation takes a couple of seconds. Uh, and it turns out, uh, even even stochastically, it works uh, amazingly well. Um, 
Okay. Well, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I did start a little late, didn't I? <laughs> but on the other hand, I shouldn't delay getting to the pub. So uh, uh, th th this is just meant to uh, indicate. You can read the paper that the level factor is is uh, is a key driving force in uh, in the in these interest rate payments. Or, or in interest rate settings. Okay, so so let me let me show um, show one or two examples of impulse responses. Um, and, and this uh, this is an example where the inflation target is raised by one percentage point, uh, still with the same uh, auto regressive. Uh, uh, autocorrelation parameter of uh, not far from one. Uh, so as you can see, uh, basically both adjustable rate mortgages, fixed rate mortgage rates, they all go up uh, by, by that order of magnitude. Um, here you see um, the effect it will have on the real mortgage payments. Uh, much big, much bigger effect on uh, adjustable rate mortgages than on fixed rate. Uh, housing investment um, initially a, a big drop, and then uh, steadily moving back. While uh, with fixed rate mortgages, kind of steady. Um, of course, uh, while the uh, in the case of adjustable rate mortgages, why, while housing investment goes down. Um, Capital investment goes up. The uh, the capital owners uh, have an incentive to to raise uh, investment, and 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 this is output. Um, those pictures were for the case where home homeowners cannot access bond market. Pardon. And uh, and the inflation rate is indeed uh, positively correlated with with with, uh, with, with output. With output. Yeah. Yes. Um, th this just shows that if we give them asset access to the to bonds, then then these uh, these effects are qualitatively similar, but they're they're just smaller. This goes from minus eight to four minus to four. This goes from minus four to two, so, uh, and th and this uh, shows the importance of the uh, persistence of. I mean, th this is what the data indicated, but uh, I if the persistence had been lower, then of course uh, the effects would would be much smaller. Um, There are many things we could we could uh, think about doing. F for example, uh, uh, the the, uh, the risk associated with uh, with uh, adjustable versus uh, fixed rate mortgages uh, is different. W one could think about ways of building it in uh, risk factors in a, in a serious way. One one of the let me just mention uh, one of the most interesting uh, things. Um, that we have thought about for the future, and that is to, to try to think about what would optimal monetary policy look like in this environment. I mean, w for example, in the current situation where interest rates have been, uh, have been low f for a while, that's, that's an example of a persistent movement in, uh, in, a, in interest rates and, and inflation rates. Um, one of the things this says is the effect of that w is likely to be smaller in a country like the United States, where uh, fixed rate mortgages account for about 70% of all uh, mortgages, as opposed to the United Kingdom, where, uh, uh, where uh, almost all uh, mortgages are adjustable rate mortgages. Um, so one, one could think about the, uh, and monetary policy maybe where uh, 
there's some, some weight on redistribution. The, uh, the redistribution effect is, is uh, different, uh, of, let's say, in, uh, in uh, interest rate increase is different under the two types of mortgages. Um, it tends to redi redistribute from the homeowner, from the capital owner to the homeowner under uh, uh, fixed rate mortgages and the other way for adjustable rate mortgages. So, so we're working on a paper to think about uh, what, what would uh, good monetary policy look like under this environment. And it's kind of interesting to think about the Eurozone. The Eurozone consists of, uh, of a bunch of countries where some have adjustable rate mortgages and some have uh, fixed rate mortgages. So this sort of, uh, it raises the question, how could you design good monetary policy that would be good for such a such a diverse uh, combination of countries. Anyway, I I think I've uh, used up m the five minutes I was late. So. Well, the I don't think I haven't seen any data that the, those fr the the fractions of uh, adjustable versus fixed is uh, is different across states, but. If that were the case, that uh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Could, could we explain the differences between the UK and the US using the differences in the monetary policy? No? Because depending on how the monetary policy is, the best uh, contract, no? mortgage, from the consumer point of view would be different. No? Because well, you get insured or not depending on the monetary policy. So changes in the monetary policy would mean you should change your preferences about mortgages. Um, that we hadn't thought about, but that's, uh, the, I suppose that would be an interesting question that would fit in under this uh, thinking about what, what would good monetary policy look like in, uh, under the, the two kinds of environments. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a good, good idea. That's a, that is a good idea, yeah. Entonces, okay. um, <laughs> okay.